Welcome everybody to the long-awaited 50th episode of Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park. This episode is going to be 25 full minutes of us exploring this theme park in first person view and just looking at everything we've built so far. Now the reason I waited for 50 full episodes, technically 62 if you include the Zelda Coaster spinoff series, to make this video exploring the park is because whenever I did a park tour video, I wanted the park to have a lot of completed elements to it. I didn't want to show off anything that was half created, especially since I do little fly throughs of things that I've built before and after each episode of this series. But like I promised, we are now going to look at the whole entire theme park. We're going to be flying through every single portion of it. Now we don't ride any rides in this video because I'm actually making separate videos where we ride all of the rides in a first person point of view and you can find links to all of the first person point of view rides down in the description for this video. The reason I did that is because this video would be a full hour if we rode every single ride in this video as well. That doesn't mean I'm not going to make a compilation video showing all of the rides being ridden in one video as well. I just got to get all that footage compiled first. So let's start enjoying this theme park, which I named Toucan Kingdom because we're going to be filling it up with some Toucan animatronics later. So all of the guests are arriving from the train station that I built because it just made sense that the guests arrive from somewhere rather than them just appear out of nowhere like they normally do. And they're all walking to the front park entrance. And the name of this theme park, I have officially announcing this, is the Toucan Kingdom because Tacking Toucans made it. And I'm going to be filling it up with tons of little Toucan animatronics in the next couple of episodes to really bring it together. Also, keep in mind, the series is not over. In fact, we're about to get into Season 2 of it, which is going to be filled with a bunch of builds that are even crazier than the things we've built so far. So, look forward to more episodes of this series. We're still going strong. This is just to look at everything we've built so far. So let's enter through our park entrance, which I think looks really cool. It looks like you're going through like a tangle of roller coaster tracks. And watching the coaster do a zero G roll over the park entrance is sick. So we enter through the park entrance and we have a really large opening plaza with buildings, gift shops, we have an IMAX theater, an arcade, a restaurant, bathrooms, information stands, everything that you could possibly want in a park entrance. And all the guests are kind of circling around in an awkward way because sometimes the guest AI is just strange in this game. Sometimes it's really cool and unique and the guests do like their own individual things and sometimes they'll like follow a path. I'm not sure. So over here we have a diner that nobody is coming over to because it's out of the way. All these people are just now entering the park. They don't care about the food. They just want to go straight to the rides and build up their appetite. And off to this side, we have a gift shop and information stand. Come right on in. You can see we have a lot of things for you to buy. We have Pokemon merchandise. We have some <laughs> Donald Ducks. I just imported a bunch of like random small objects so I could like start to fill out the shelves. And this leads over to the Asian theme section of the park, which is the one section we will not be looking at in this video because it's only about 20% done. That is one of the next parts we're going to be working on, and I'll tour that once it's finished, but we gotta wait for that to be finished. But now, moving over to the other side of the plaza, we have a candy store. Look to our left, that leads to the other section of the park. We have more stuff down that way, but first let's look inside the candy store. Go inside, we have some food and stuff. We have some lockers if you want to keep your belongings safe in the park. We have more clothes, you can buy some food in the back. And like I said, I'm importing small objects to fill these shelves. Not every single shelf in this park is filled yet because I didn't want to add too many small objects to the park and like lowered the frame rate even more. And over here we have an arcade. We have ski ball, air hockey, arcade machines, gun machines. We have gumball machines, pizza, and a lot of other cool things that the guests can interact with. It's a really neat arcade. Most of those are imported models as well. We have a merry-go-round over by the park entrance. I put this by the park entrance because I feel like merry-go-rounds, the music they play, is really reminiscent of old-time theme parks. And so it just kind of gives you the right vibe as you enter. And over to this side is just some office buildings for the management and the finance team to work at. It's so nothing too important. And moving over to this building right here, we have the IMAX Theater, which has quite a variety of movies for you to watch. The movies that are on here are kind of some of the movies that were in the box office whenever I started building the IMAX theater. But you can actually watch movies here as well. You go in, you can see there's a bunch of chairs, and this is a regular size movie theater. This is in the IMAX screen. 
but they're playing a Indiana Jones-esque movie in here. And moving over to the main large screen, this is where you go if you want to see the Avengers Endgame, baby. Which I still haven't seen Avengers Endgame. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll watch it eventually. I'm sorry I'm not contributing and making it one of the highest grossing films of all time. But I will watch it when it comes out to DVD. Coming to the back side of the movie theater, we have some air hockey tables and some more arcade machines and some concessions. Now while flying through this park, I actually noticed quite a few things that aren't 100% finished. And I didn't notice them until I was flying through this park because it's been a while since I've actually flown through the whole entire park like this. So I did make like a list of things I need to finish up and even like fix a little bit. So if you see any issues with the park, point them out to me in the comments and I'll try to fix them in future episodes. This is going to be the ultimate theme park. It's not there quite yet, but we're still striving. We come out the back doors though, you can see the back side of the Manhattan Project, which is pretty cool. It's a chill little place to just hang out. There's some nice trees. Now let's head to the main plaza strip. And also you might be wondering why these paths are so empty right here, and it's because there's not very many rides right here. All of the guests right now, we have about 3,000 people in the park right now, but most of them are out in the back side of the park riding all the rides, because that's what they really care about. I mean, I think the IMAX theater is cool, but these guests don't realize that the IMAX theater is like some functional movie theater. They just want to ride some roller coasters, so that's where you're going to see everybody in line for the rides. So coming back over here, we have a French restaurant. We have a lot of like random stuff in this entrance. You have another information stand. You can get some park maps there. Um, if you go like onto some of these back paths, they lead to some staffing buildings so they can rest and whatnot. But there's also just some more restaurants. It's really weird that this is the very first thing we built in this theme park. But then I went back and added like a lot more to the entrance halfway through the series to make it much better. Because when I first started this park, I wasn't even that great at the game. I'd only played it for about three or four months. I'm like so much better now. So if they ever release like Planet Coaster 2 and we'd make an ultimate theme park part two, I'm gonna probably be so much more experienced and we're gonna even be able to build cooler styles of theme parks. And back here leads to the entrance of our giant barn swing ride, which is one of my favorite thrill rides to date. They have one of these in Silver Dollar City and it's so much fun. My only complaint is they don't last long enough. I wish those rides, I wish so many theme park rides would just last longer. That's all they wished. And real quick, I wanted to show you guys what it's like going into first person view for a guest in the park. Eventually, I want to make a video where we just like click on a guest and go into first person view. And I make a video that's a couple hours long where you just get to experience this park from the first person of view of somebody who is visiting the theme park. But I'll do that once we have even more finished because I want to finish a few more sections of the park before we do that. Now we are now entering the medieval section which is known as the Hyrule Kingdom because we have Hyrule Castle in the background and a Zelda coaster. So we're kind of just imagining that this is another marketplace for Hyrule Castle. If we head back into this market, we find the queue that leads to the monorail that takes you to all of the different sections of the theme park. So this one just starts up in the castle wall and it circles you around to every other section of the park so you can have fast travel. Not as quick as fast travel in Mario Odyssey, but we're getting there. Gotta wait until Cappy transportation is possible in the real world, I guess. Whenever you raise the camera up this high, you start to see like all the buildings at once and you're just like, holy crap, this theme park has a crap ton of buildings. And I built most of these buildings, probably about 90% of them, piece by piece. Most of these structures have hundreds of little pieces to them. Wall pieces, roof pieces, trim, windows everything but most of you have watched the series let's build the ultimate theme park so you guys know what goes into building these rides you've seen the struggles the trials and tribulations over here we have the entrance to our little car ride which i know is kind of weird that we have a ride in this medieval section where you ride on little cars like i know cars didn't exist in this time but i really wanted to have a ride of this type in this section and i'm not sure if there was any vehicle types that worked with the medieval scenery but there might be one now. I need to go back and check and see if there's something I can switch it to because that would actually be great. We have some other food over here. We have a donut shop. Looks like Amy is getting her donuts or Frida. <laughs> She's enjoying herself. And now we're starting to get a good view of the Hyrule Castle, which you might notice a little Easter egg towards the next episode of the series. I start building another roller coaster on top of the castle because... Like I said, season two of Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park is going to go pretty dang hard. I'm going to start getting very experimental and crazy with these rides, because I'm not trying to make the most realistic theme park. I'm just trying to make a theme park that's really cool and 
I'm doing things that you could only do in a fictional world. That's what I'm trying to keep in mind. So I want to build a theme park with like no constraints or limitations. Because if we're being realistic, I actually haven't told the backstory of this theme park. Um, but pretty much the way this theme park came to be is there was a man who made hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. And before he died, he just wanted to do something great for the world. So he decided to make a gigantic theme park with all that money. And he even made it free to enter so anybody could come and have the best day of their life, no matter their wealth or status. And he did it. So everybody who's here got to come in for free. We even have free parking, which is pretty nice. So come to the Toucan Kingdom. It's going to be a great experience for everybody. So this whole entire market section for the Hyrule Kingdom is just filled with more kids rides, more chill rides. But that's because over in the Asian section, we have two roller coasters. And then we're going to have two roller coasters in Hyrule Castle. Well, there's already one roller coaster. And the second one's being built up there, which you will see in the next episode of this series. So let's go ahead and just like tour Hyrule Castle for a bit. I'm going to make a whole separate video where we really get into depth showing the finished Hyrule Castle. But for this little video, I thought we might as well tour it and show what we got so far. Because this is one of the biggest structures in the game. I also don't mind that sometimes the people's feet or maybe whole bodies can get cut off like this. Because I wanted the stairs to look realistic to this castle. Even if the guests had to walk through them awkwardly because they don't realize what's happening. So the inside of this castle is themed after the castle in Wind Waker, but the castle itself is inspired by a variety of Zelda games. I'm working on a Zelda museum in one of the side rooms right now, and there's only one more episode of Let's Build the Zelda Coaster until that's done, so the finished ride for that is coming very, very soon. I wanted to get this video out before I made that one, though, but that's one of the next things I'm working on. Just gotta take one step at a time. So now this part where the moat and drawbridge is, is one of my favorite little sections of the park. It just looks really, really clean. And I could just imagine this part of the park being filled up with a lot of people during a parade or something because there's just so much space. If we go inside this building, there's quite a few instances in this park where I try to make sections wheelchair accessible. Even though there's like a little piece of block right here, I need to fix that. But I wanted this theme park to be as accessible to disabled people as possible, just because we want to be as inclusive as we possibly can. But this is the way to leave the medieval section. We're heading to the next part, which is the French Riviera. Let's just like look back and just see the butt of the dragon, the tail just swinging back and forth. I love the animatronics in this game. It's not heading out, we're heading over to the French Riviera, which is a little miniature town that I created for a couple rides. Over here we have one of the new rides that was added in the Magnificent Ride Collection. Now one of the coolest things about this series, if you watch it from episode 1 till now, is I started playing this game before there was any DLC or any updates. So as I'm playing and building onto this park, I talk about all the DLC they announced and add to the game, and you can see the whole entire game, Planet Coaster, evolve as I keep on talking about all the evolutions and keep on showing more and more unique things you can do in this game. Because a lot of the people who create parks in this game have created lots of just unique ways to turn scenery pieces and combine other scenery pieces into new objects. There's tons of little like tips and tricks you can learn just from watching other people build their theme parks. But that's one of my favorite things about the series is I documented myself building a theme park, but I also kind of documented the progression and evolution of Planet Coaster itself. So it's really there for just my own personal memories and I can like have this series to remember just my excitement for every new DLC that was announced for Planet Coaster and then watching the game come out and looking at all the new pieces and updates they added to the game. It's been really cool. It's been super exciting. It's like every single time they announce new DLC, it's like a Nintendo Direct for me, but from Frontier and Planet Coaster. Now coming to the top of this go-kart track, if we look to the right, we can see a beautiful sunset, we can see the hotel, the boardwalk, the edge of Hyrule Castle. Now something else I'm going to do at the end of this episode, I'm going to show the park during nighttime for a bit as well. But that's another cool thing, is you can have the time of day at any point you would like, and almost every single time of day looks a little bit different because the shadows will cast differently on things. If you do it during sunset, everything will be kind of red and look really pretty and the lights will all be turned on. If you do it during the nighttime, it's dark and you can see how beautiful the lighting of Planet Coaster is. If you play it during noon, then there won't be any shadows and everything will be super bright, but you can see the full detail of everything. Like it's just really cool how many different ways you can see this park. And coming back over here, we can find the entrance to the go-karts and the French Revolution. <laughs> it's 
a really weird pun, and the market section of the French Riviera. You can see the maintenance man working on a soda machine. So cool, I didn't, I didn't even know the soda machines could break down until literally just now. Over here, we can see one of my favorite views of the whole entire theme park, which is the main drop to our log flume. Just have a gigantic cliffside filled with waterfalls, and once that water reflection kicks in, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. It's almost too good to be true. My main goal while building this theme park is I wanted every single section and part of the theme park to be as photogenic as possible. That was the main thing that I was working on when building this theme park, is I just wanted it to be beautiful. I know a lot of my roller coasters aren't super realistic or super duper smooth, and that's mostly because I'm not amazing at building roller coasters, I'm much better at decorating. I need to watch more videos and just learn how to build coasters even better. Now here is our hotel, which the guests can actually stay the night at. Entering this lobby, I realized that I forgot to detail the lobby out. I'm gonna come back and add some details and make this look a little bit better because it's very unfinished and I'm kind of embarrassed to even be showing it right now. But it's okay because the series isn't done and we still have time to do that. But in the back of the hotel, we have a restaurant. And this restaurant has quite a phenomenal view. And swirly bushes! Everyone loves swirly bushes. And the best thing is, if we come up to the roof, we have a rooftop pool and spa, which is one of the highlights of staying at this hotel in the first place. It's quite gorgeous, and you'll have a fantastic stay, if I do say so myself. Yes, quite. And over here, we have the entrance to our hot air balloon tours, which isn't an actual ride. That's like one of those rides that we have to use our imagination with. But we also have another arcade, which this arcade is a little bit more old school it's a little bit older because we are now in the vintage section of our park so this was the very first section of the park that was built and all of the rides are older originally the cedar wall pier which had to name something in the park after myself i don't know why maybe it's because i spent like 500 hours building this park but if we come out to the pier we have like a little ride and a restaurant at the very end of the pier to go and eat at but yeah this was the very first section that was built of the park not in the series but just historically and so we made it look a little bit more older and a little bit torn put a wooden coaster at the very back because usually lots of theme parks their very first coaster is a wooden coaster returning to the vintage section you can already see the skull from a distance to our log flume because we have a nice looking pirate themed area over here we have a swinging ship and a little jungle entrance that leads to our pirate ride this this log flume is one of my favorite rides in the whole entire park. The scenery is really, really cool and it just lasts such a long time and there's so many different sections. It just keeps going and then ends with a phenomenal drop next to the waterfalls. I'm still thinking about adding another water ride with a river rapids ride over by the volcano, but that's still to be determined. Now over here, let's take a little peek at the next area that we're going to be cultivating in this park where we have a big flat area which I'm going to be turning into a small replica of downtown New York City where we're going to have a roller coaster go in between skyscrapers because I thought that would be super cool and having that in the back corner of the park would really stand out. And here's the entrance to our wooden coaster which is a little bit more vanilla looking. It's not too overtly themed, just kind of went more with a vintage theme. And it's a really just quaint little entrance and I remodeled this whole entire wooden coaster off camera I pretty much rebuilt the whole thing made it taller longer scarier faster the whole shebang and we'll be writing that soon in a new video about to come out let's take a quick look at the Zelda coaster from the backside because lots of people if they haven't watched the Zelda coaster series they probably haven't seen this coaster I'm not gonna look too much at it just wanted to take a small little sneak peek it's crazy how long I've been working on this singular coaster back here, but since I've been working on the rest of the theme park while making it and all the other things I've been doing, it's been a work in progress. But it's a very, very large work in progress. <laughs> Can't rush greatness, my friends. So now we're going to hop back over to the middle of the park, back by the French Riviera, and move to the right, where we're going to find the sci-fi themed area of the park. And after you look at it, I want you guys to let me know down in the comments, so far from what we've seen built, what is your favorite section of this theme park? I'd love to know, and let me know why too, so I can know like what parts people like and what parts people don't like, so I can continue making things that people like in the future, because I'm making this park for me, but I'm also making it for your guys' enjoyment as well, and I want to appease all of you as my viewers. So we're moving into the giant sci-fi complex, which this was one of the hardest things to build in this whole entire series so far. 
because it's just so large and there's so many small details. I guess this and Hyrule Castle are both really, really difficult builds. There's a lot of Star Wars references because we have a Star Wars theme roller coaster in here. This path up here leads to the monorail. Here's another section where you can get on and off the monorail. And the roof is really, really high in here. We have like a space rock kind of jutting up into the ceiling. And there's also bumper cars over in this back corner. It doesn't seem like many people are trying to get on the bumper cars right now, which is weird. Because last time I was playing this, the line for the bumper cars was completely full. What happened to the people? Why don't they like the bumper cars anymore? Or maybe it was just broken down. It's possible that it was broken down and that it just got fixed. Because that does happen. And when it's broken down, people don't wait in line because that'd be a waste of time. And heading over here, I love seeing Hyrule Castle in the background in so many areas first off. That's so great. But over here we have Gamma Ray, which is one of our awesome inverted coasters. People, people are hanging out in the little gift shop towards the exit. Now, I'm not going to go through the queue of this ride, but most of the rides have really, really in-depth queues. Like, on that ride, you, like, go through, like, a cave that goes into, like, an alien space station before you even get on the coaster itself. So, in the description, I advise you to ride some of these rides and see what it's like to ride the rides and even go through the lines and see what it's like walking to the coaster in the first place. It can be super neat. Over here, we have some more gift shops. There's a hat store. We have the first official restaurant we built in the park that has an area where you can eat at on the back balcony. It's really pretty. I put so much detail. I learned so much about architecture while like studying and trying to make every single building in this park look unique and different. Because that is one thing you might notice is that every single building has a completely different feel to it. And that's because I really tried my best to make every building stand out. Now just coming back to an overhead view of the park, you can see all the sections. We have the parking lot, we have the entrance, the medieval section, the French Riviera, sci-fi, vintage, pirate, and there's the part where we're going to build the New York section. We're working on the Asian section, that's going to be the tropical volcano part. And then off to the right hand side, I do have some ideas for the theming here, but I'm just going to keep those to myself because I don't want to reveal too many secrets all at once. And gotta, i got to give you guys something to look forward to information wise, I can't spill it all to you. Got to keep my lips tight in some areas. But next, let's take a look at this park during the night time because I think it's even prettier at night. Now, unfortunately, the frame rate drops even a bit more during the night time because all of the lighting effects get amplified because there's now like a thousand lights in the park that are all being turned on. But it just looks so gorgeous during the night time. Like, I just love the lighting effects for this game. You can make things look so beautiful. Now, if you were like wanting to make a ride in this park where you just put all of your effort into one ride rather than like spreading it out amongst the whole entire park, you can literally make the coolest theme park ride ever in this game. And there's some really cool rides that have been made for Planet Coaster. And just looking over the park right now, I'm even seeing more places that I need to add lights and need to brighten things up a bit. This park is turning out really cool, but it still has a long ways to go. Pretty much my intentions are to keep on adding on to this park until I literally can't have a computer that can open it up anymore. <laughs> but right now, apart from the frame rate staggering, which has been doing that for a while, the game seems to be running quite fine, so I don't see there being an end anytime soon. That being said, we have just finished the first season of Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park. Season 2 probably will not last nearly as long. It's going to be the season where we just keep on adding lots of crazy stuff. But I'm really excited into building more, so thank you all for joining me with this. And let's jump into the next Planet Coaster season, baby. Attacking Toucans, out.